Hey everyone, this is Jake, and today we are going to be talking about Yumina, the Awakening version. She's a pretty cool character, and we have a lots of things to talk about her as well. And definitely, she got some really, really cool designs, so I really like her. Uh, but there are also a lot of things to discuss about her in terms of how good she is and where she could be used in the future content as well. So we'll go through a lot of those and we'll talk about what my thoughts on this character at the end of the day. So let's jump into the video and let's talk about Awaken Me Now. So let's talk about her skills. Her skills are all about doing a lot of AoE damage. Even though she's a striker unit, she is able to do a lot of AoE damage with a decent amount of ballad hits. So first of all, with her basic skill, she is able to dish out some AoE damage with the two ballad hits. It's a pretty simple basic attack, so it might not be too crazy, but consider that she has really really high base attack stats. So with this basic attack doing a lot of AoE hits, that she is definitely able to do a lot of DPS on multiple units, especially with the PvP and PvE. And passive that follows up with it definitely connects really well with it. And we'll go into her passive skill, which is pretty long. So, her passive skill is called the Wolf Fang, and when it gets deployed, charges forward and inflicts the AoE damage, and then additionally attacks targets in a 6 meter radius. And after every third basic attack, she delivers an enhanced attack. In Gauntlet, inflicting additional damage by 15% of current HP on non ship targets with invalid hits. So, Let's talk about the skill in more in depth. So when she gets deployed, she comes out and she does AoE hits as she pulls out the sword. It does pretty decent AoE damage. It's pretty good passive skills as she deploys, especially with the PvP. And her second passive is doing additional attack after every third strike. And this is actually one of the things that will boost her per DPS quite a big time. So as you stack more attack speed on her, she should be definitely be able to do a decent amount of damage with this additional passive attack skill. And doing additional damage based off their HP is definitely a pretty good passive to have. It sucks that it does not apply within PvE. If this applied within PvE, I think this would have been crazy buff towards to Mina, but yeah, it doesn't work that way. And as you max her skills out, she will be getting some attack speed boosted, as well as immunity to hit stun from the special attack or the lower skills for 6 seconds. So getting immunity from hit stun from a special attack is definitely pretty good with the PvP. PvE wise, it's definitely kind of something useless. Still nice to have though. The key of this passive skill as she maxes out is that every time she triggers her bonus passive attack, she'll be able to stack additional 30% attack speed for 6 seconds. So if it used well with a lot of different things, with the decent amount of attack speed buff, she is able to chain this passive skill really nicely and allow herself to trigger more passive bonus attack. So overall, pretty good passive skill, very offensive, very attack speed based. Definitely pretty good skills to have and connects well with the rest of the skills that she has as well. And let's talk about her special skill called the Sword Blaster. She charges up at a target and swings her sword, inflicting AoE damage on surrounding enemies. She then fires a blaster upward, inflicting additional AoE damage. So this special skill is also pretty good AoE damage. She's able to just launch enemies within the air with this skill as well and able to do a lot of damage. And as you max out the skill, uh, you get more damage. And at the skill level 5, she's gonna get additional cooldown time, as well as the special skills attack also count as towards to passive skill. Her ultimate skill is called the Ulsbane Legacy, you know, maximize Ulsbane's power and inflicting AoE damage at the front. Another more AoE damage, and as she maxes out the skill, the passive decrease ultimate skill cooldown by 3 seconds. So overall, I think her skill sets are pretty nice, very offensive, very fun to use. She's able to deploy, trigger a lot of AoE hits with her passive skills, follow up with the special skills, then go back to passive skill to do the initial hits, do some more damage, pulls out another uh, special skill and does ultimate skills, and go back to stacking all these up, and chain reactions are pretty great, pretty well designed skill kits for DPS class. 
So definitely a pretty fun unit to use in terms of skill choices, and we'll talk about how she fares within PvE and PvP. So how's Mina with the PvP activities? She used to be called as Grenade within Korean server, that's the nickname they gave her because she was able to throw it out to the field, delete the enemies, and go back inside because she would be get killed by sniping units within 2-3 seconds. So that was her usage, very strong 6 seconds burst damage units, and that was pretty much it. To this day, that stands still the same. She's able to throw it out, do some large amount of damage, and quickly get killed by any other enemies now. Only difference is that there is way more tanky units and way more sniper units that's able to take her out from a distance. And also the fact there are many 6 cost units that's able to do a better job than her, stay alive longer, able to turn the tides of your battle a lot more. You know, there is pretty much no real reason to use Mina anymore. You know, there are just so much more units, especially with the striker pose, that's able to do a lot more damage as well as able to survive longer. So there is pretty much a zero reason to really use her. You know, if you really want to terrorize ships, there's way better options within Korean server. You know, I say Awaken Heal is kind of outdated within Korean server. Mina is even lower than that. You know, she is unusable. That's the only word I can really describe her. To if you're playing her for the PvP, C server she should be pretty decent, but she will be nowhere near as she used to be with the PvP in Korean server because now they are defenders with the ballot hit absorption like a Hiele and Yumi and other units coming out in the future so it's gonna be even harder to pull her out and trying to be the joker card still if you use it right she can definitely be really really good the thing is this way she's awakening units so you really have to consider if it is worth pulling for but honestly I think she's worse than awakening Hilde and within PvP it's really hard to use her right now with the Korean server and won't be long before C server gets a safe treatment How's Mina within PvE activities? In PvE, I can definitely give you better news. She is really really strong in terms of DPS. It's easier to keep her alive within PvE activities as well, so you will definitely find some place to use her. But in the end game PvE activities, a lot of times snipers and the ranger units are the ones that's gonna be doing a lot of damage. Usually defenders are strong enough to able to defend them, so those two classes are able to be stay safe and dish out damage much as they could. Something like Mina, especially the striker class, she is very squishy and she will be moving forward with her skill set like that. So that puts her to the risk right away and chances are that she's going to be hitting all the attacks the enemy does right at the front and she will just die and you waste the 6 costs on her. I really want to tell you guys good news about Mina, uh, it's just there's no real point. She still has pretty big potential if the enemies, such the enemies are ranger types and she is able to dish out damage. But that is pretty much it. There are too many good striker units right now and her usage is very limited and in most of cases that she could be replaced by any other units as well. So in this game with the counter side being a high cost comes with great responsibilities and she is not able to stand up and take that responsibility because she is too squishy. So that is pretty much about Mina. If you still want to use her after all the negatives I talked about her, there are some gear options for you right here. If you want to use her within PvP, definitely is best into boosting up her attacks. So two attack sets will definitely help her out and able to dish out a lot of damage in a short burst of time. Attack speed is going to be something that's going to be very crucial if you want to use her within PvE activities because boosting up her attack speed will trigger her passive more often and triggering her passive more often will create more chain reactions with the other skills she has and boosting her DPS in a big time. So consider those two options, it's a pretty simple character. Boost up her attack if you want to use her with the short burst grenade type damage DPS units within PvP and use attack speed sets if you want to use her with the PvE activities. So that is pretty much everything about Awakened Mina. Trust me, I try to be fair as possible. I tried to give her most positive points as I could. But within Korean servers, she is definitely one of those useless awakening units. 
There are some spots like I said that she could be used with the end game PvE activities. Like on one spot, literally, that's about it. So it's really hard to justify pulling for her. And it, it is really sad because like I said, I think she, her character is really great. Her character design is amazing. She looks really, really cool. I just really... I just really love her and her skill set is really fun and it's really fun to see when she stacks up her attack speed and able to dish out a lot of damage on bosses. But like I said, ultimately she is awakening units, it's expensive units to pull for and if I were you and if I had a choice, I would definitely not go for her. And the current version of her, I can definitely say she is not worth pulling for. So unless you with the C server you want to have some fun with her as of right now with the PvP, I don't think there's any more extra reason that you need to go for her. So it's up to you, like I said, it's always your choices and waifu comes first in games like this. But and Mina is definitely not the bad character. It's just that her price points to get into. Um, I can't really recommend it to any players out there as of right now. Things could change as the more balanced patch comes out within July, so we'll see how things turn out for her. I don't really have a high hopes for her. I think she's just one of those units, if, the, if they tweak it too much, she'll become really overpowered, or if they just tweak her attack or anything, she will just die too quickly either way, so it won't be any much better than what she is right now. Anyways, thanks everyone for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks all for waiting out for my video. I had a lot of work to do and it's continued to have a lot of work to do <laughs> but definitely around next week I should have more time so I should be able to stream and get back to into making more videos but thanks all for watching this video I hope you guys enjoyed this and look out for my future video as well and I will see you guys next time bye bye